Pyro Gallery is a cooperative gallery. There are 19 members currently, and all members are co-owners of Pyro Gallery. So everyone has a say in how the gallery is run. Everyone is active, serving on committees, working shifts, and having the opportunity to exhibit their work at about every couple of years. We're almost 10 years in uh, to our co-op, and first we started at the firehouse on Hancock, which is why we're called Pyro, and then we moved up uh, to uh, a gallery near 21C, and we moved here about six months ago because we, we like the space, it's intimate, and also the energy of being in Nulu. I love this space, and I love the location. I think being in Nulu is really an exciting thing for us. I think the whole neighborhood's gonna be moving this direction. I go to the Nulu Business Association meetings. I represent Cairo there. And it's fascinating to see what's going on in the neighborhood. It's not like a gallery where you have to please one director in order to show. I feel much more free to do what I want to do and then show it uh, because I don't have to be thinking about you know, well, someone will find it commercially viable necessarily. This show is sold very well, but they don't always do that. And I, I hate being under that sort of uh, uh, effort, you know, to try to make things don't sell. Not, my, not what I do. We are a very cohesive group. We are happy to support one another, inspire one another, brainstorm with one another. It's, we're at a place right now that I think is we, as good as we've been right now as, as a group of artists working together toward common goals. Uh, my work is two-dimensional work. I do prints and drawings. I've been in this area for a long time. I'm um, with Indiana University Southeast. For me as an artist, I get to um, be inspired by other people's art, uh, and it gives me ideas, and we share information and get feedback. As an individual artist, um, one of uh, my friends had said to me that if you want to mature as an artist, you just have to have a show. And if you have a deadline, then you have to aim towards it, and then you have to seriously edit and think about what you want to show and why, and it will mature you. And I have found that to be true. Every time I've had a show, it's done something for me that um, just forced um, a development that probably wouldn't have happened if I didn't have to really focus this way. This is called um, The Next Call Letter Forms. This time I started with scan text, so everything in here starts with an original print or font or hieroglyph. Uh, the first I did, I had this 1860 version of Les Miserables, and uh, I just loved the patina on this aging paper. It had these wonderful ivories and creams and whites and these wonderful old print fonts. So I scanned that, and then I began to um, do the equivalent of cut and paste and paint on it in the computer and evolve different compositions and then with different nuances of, of color. Because I'm starting with print, there is a certain uh, monochrome look to things, the very subtle nuances of the color, but it all um, holds together. And the other uh, advantage to this is the pieces look differently when you're far away, intermediate, or up close because then they take on different lives. I don't remember my first paintbrush. I've been an artist all my life. My mother was an art school graduate, and so she always encouraged me and my sisters to do art. Um, I think of myself primarily as a painter, though this work is not painted. There's not one single piece of paint on it. And the name is WOW, Wonderful Old Women, and that's what it stands for, Wonderful Old Women. I'm not a young chick myself, <laughs> and I've always done work uh, that really relates to my own life. Well, the women are women that I say they're, they're not actual, but they're real. Um, that I make them up as I go along. I, uh, my niece Googled old lady names for me, and I had this big long list in my studio of names that came up on that. So as I'm working on these, I look at them and think about what name would work for them and then give them a name, and they really become that lady. But it's often how many people say to me, how did you get that name so right? And just, you know, it just seemed like the right one. I call them paper mosaics. They're done with papers cut only from art magazines. 
I had a big stack of art magazines I didn't know what to do with, so that was one of the main reasons. And then I liked the idea of making art from other people's art. So for example, one of the ladies has eyes that were originally made by Picasso, uh, lips made by Lichtenstein. Uh, some of them were just ads. There was a, a bubble wrap dress on one lady. Uh, and a lot of the just wonderful colors in ads and art magazines. And this particular move has been really a wonderful thing for Pyro. It's, it's a new space, a different space. I think that it has energized the membership. We've brainstormed possibilities for uh, events to bring people in, such as the gallery talk that we had today. Um, we're thinking outside the box relative to things that we might be able to do out in the parking lot. Um, all opportunities to bring people in, but to also be part of the, the scene here at New York.